At a very young age, my mom sat me down in front of the television and put in Star Wars on VHS and said, son, this is our religion. My dad showed me the Ten Commandments, the big um, three hour epic at age three. And so that had a disastrous effect on uh, my life. Uh, again, the stories of the fantastic have always um, inspired me. And in my work, I always try to pay homage to that, do the stories that are larger than life, if you will. But what do you mean by the fantastic? By the fantastic, I mean, I don't think you will ever see me do a movie about a Thanksgiving dinner and how the family members come around and it's just a normal Thanksgiving dinner, if that makes sense. If I'm doing a movie about a Thanksgiving dinner, the turkey comes alive and attacks everyone. If it's the fantastic, something that you won't see every day. So, I mean, Attack of the, these are the titles that I've done. Attack of the Octopus People, The Menace with Five Arms, which is about a giant starfish that attacked New York City. Um, Voyage to the Planet of Teenage Cave Women, uh, which speaks for itself. Um, <laughs> The Return of Sherlock Holmes is probably the most normal film that I've done, but even then it's in a eight, the, eight, the 19th century or late 19th century and we're all in costumes and it's more, it's heightened. It's not realistic. It doesn't draw from real life. That makes sense. I made my first movie when I was five years old and it was little soldiers on the lid of my toilet bowl and it was called It Came From The Bathroom and it was this giant monster that came out of the bathroom and out of the toilet and killed all my toy soldiers. And even before that, that was the family camera that I hijacked and took for myself. Even before that, I was writing little, and basically they're, they're storyboards, I mean with stick figures and they would be like my little books and it was Moby Duck which is like my little thing on Moby Dick. And this is like pre five years old. So I must have been four, four and a half and writing these little stick figures stories. And there was a giant octopus, very crude drawings, but they, they, that was in essence, my first movies were those little stick figure drawings. Cause I would, whenever I would show it to someone, I'd hum the music that was behind it. It's like, and then the octopus came and then I'd flip the page. It was very, very storyboard like, so. I guess these films and these stories, again, have been with me it's from such an early age that it just became, it's like, it's like the tree that grows up against, a, or the vines that grow up against a the fence. They're just gonna become, the, they just became a part of me. And they've, they've always been there. Again, made my first movie when I was five and had been filming ever since, but just as a hobby, just fun. And then high school came around and I was big into theater in high school, still am. Um, and it occurred to me, I was like, you know, people make a, a living out of, <laughs> or they, be, they make this their life. And it had never occurred to me until high school um, that maybe this is where I should focus my interests. Um, but yeah, it's always been there. And it was only until high school that I moved it to the forefront. Mm -hmm. My family has been nothing but supportive. I mean, I could have been, I could have found pleasure in picking up garbage off the street and they would have supported me 100%. And so, I mean, you look at my early, early, even you look at my early, early stuff and my parents are involved in something, they're narrating, my dad comes in as a cameo and gets attacked by the monster. And then even, even now my latest film, which I just finished this summer there, my mom has a cameo, my dad has a cameo. So it's always, my sister has always been behind the camera, helping been in front of the camera. They've always been a part of it. And They've been so supportive. I really couldn't have done it without them. I mean, looking back on it, like that's been nothing but a blessing. Mm -hmm. Were you like self-aware of that at that time? Or? Somewhat, and it was more so after I went to school in New York City and you meet all, and of course I'm thrown out of the Valley, which has been my home and where I've lived this entire time. And to go into a different culture in New York City and to see different people from different backgrounds and say how their family never supported them, how their, making, they never had the equipment, their family never had a camera, they're, they're tr making ends meet just to film stuff. It, it was very eye-opening. And that, that's when I realized, it's like, I, I had it pretty good family-wise. I have it pretty good. Well, I mean, the, the problem with me still is how I wanna have my hand in everything. And I'd say, especially applying to different colleges, they're like, so what are you gonna be? You're gonna be a director? I was like, well, I kinda wanna do all of it. And, um, yeah, and that's, I still love having my hands in everything. And 
of course, you meet the people who were, I met one guy who was destined to be a sound guy. He's like, I want to be sound. And I was like, wow, you're going to get all the, all the jobs. Uh, because <laughs> most people don't make up their minds um, uh, like me. And um, I, like the, the culture shock of my friend who his, his mom was, uh, worked in a radio station. And he was uh, exposed to all these, these sound things. And, uh, and so his... his background wasn't sound and he wanted to go in that direction um but yeah I, I always wanted to have my my hand in in everything everyone talks to me about well everyone back and, and they still do they go so you just graduated college you're going to hollywood and i was like no and they're like well why not don't you want to be a filmmaker and i was like filmmaking for me is Again, from the very first, from age five, where I'm filming on the toilet, my little toy soldiers, that's, fil that's filmmaking for me. That's producing, that's directing. And going to Hollywood now just seems like a, in my opinion, for me, a terrible thing. Because then I would be locked into, I want to be a sound guy. I want to be the clapperboard guy. I don't, um, and why go... In my opinion, why go to Hollywood right now wanting to be a director when I can direct with my friends back home? My goal right now is just to keep making my own films. I would love that till the end of time. It would be great to have some money, you know, <laughs> to people donate and invest. That would be divine. Um, but right now, as long as I can keep shooting, even on my, my, little, my little camera on my computer, I would be happy as a duck. <laughs> my first feature, I wrote when I was 14, 15 in that realm. And I never thought that I would, it was just a story that I wrote. And it's funny how things come full circle. Um, I was a freshman and in high school and there was a senior there named Marco Munoz and huge inspiration on me uh, in the drama team. And we had, we had gone out of town for some theatrical competition, one act play or something. And we were just exchanging, two artists just exchanging ideas. And like, wouldn't it be cool if we made a movie that this, and I told him my story and it was called Attack of the Octopus People. And I told him the story. And for the first time, he, someone that I looked up to and who wasn't a family member said, dude, you need to make that. And it lit a flame under my butt. And I was like, oh man, okay, let's do it. And, in the, and I wrote it and it took me a year to write it. And just on and off, just I'm gonna, working like this. Never, I had done my little mini movies before, but had never written a full length script. And even at, it was, it took a year and then it took another year to film it all. Cause I was filming on weekends with the, the, the drama team. Um, People had graduated that I had originally cast. And so we were filming, again, on weekends at people's houses with a little $20 Target camera. And it was this black and white monster movie about octopuses taking over the world. And it's, I film, finished it, edited it on Movie Maker, of all freaking things, filmed on, edited on Movie Maker. Thank you, Movie Maker. But gosh, uh, how did I do that? How did I survive? Um, no microphone, no crew, no nothing. Just that little that little camera, and I had no no intention of releasing it. I showed it at my birthday. Had all the cast come. It was big fun. I sent it to a few friends, and then um, a friend asked, "Aren't you going to release this on DVD?" And I go, "I have no idea." He's like, "Why don't you send it to this DVD company called Alpha Entertainment?" And on a whim, I just sent it to them, and they're the ones who do all the five dollar. DVD bins, DVDs, like the very public domain monster movies. And I, I buy all of them anyway. I collect all of them. So Last Man on Earth, House on Haunted Hill, all these old stuff. And they're the company that releases them, or one of the companies that releases them. And again, the $5 Walmart bin. And I sent it to them, and they absolutely loved it. They said, we need to release this right now. And they sent me a contract within a week. And I was like, oh my god, I was 15. And then 16 by the time it came out. And oh my, that again, something clicked in my head. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I could start releasing my own stuff. 
again, that was this very, I don't know if I can sit through Attack of the Octopus people now, just how <laughs> crude it is. Um, again, the wind messing up the, the microphone, the sound, um, some of the effects are a little uh, cringeworthy, but people love it. Apparently, it's the most popular film that Alpha Home Entertainment has released. According to them, they say it's the most popular independent film that they've released, which freaks me out. Um, so I guess I've been, and so I've done 12 cents. Usually my ideas come from watching another movie or a lot, a lot from my dreams actually, um, believe it or not. I'll have a dream and I'll write down something and that's usually sprung a lot of stuff. But uh, I'll watch a movie that inspires me. Uh, Orson Welles did Touch of Evil, which I saw three years ago, two years ago. And that, I saw it at, in New York City, they were playing it at, at a cinema. <laughs> and that blew my mind. I was like, I needed just the mood, the lighting, this very grungy, it's a film noir no one's really a good guy type film and the film i made immediately after that was called the vesuvius experiment and a completely different i mean it was about a man turning into a crab uh but um the feel of it i wanted that dark feel so again if i see a movie that inspires me it's going to end up in my next project somehow curse of the insect woman started with a dream about a woman that was turning into a giant cockroach. I was like, that's a great idea for a movie. <laughs> and I built the movie around that. Well, here's a good one. Uh, there was this very, let's say, Pace University's security guards and I didn't really see eye to eye with me filming on campus. And so, um, nothing against Pace University. They're doing their jobs and, you know, the skinny white guy with the camera is, you know, a big threat to security. But, um, and it was just constantly like getting hammered and it's like, you can't be doing this, you can't be doing this. So for my final opus, my final film at Pace University, it was all shot on campus. And it was just really my way of not sticking it to the man, but it felt good to, you know, sneak a bike into the university and ride it around in the hallways uh, to get away with it. Um, to that, I'm, I'm going around in circles. Uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Um, so that was my way of, of dealing. And it was a good little love letter. Even people who have seen it say it's a nice love letter pace because you see everything around pace. And it was really my goodbye to the university. It's like, you know, I'm going to film completely, even if I don't have permission, uh, which I don't recommend. You should always get permission. But um, this is my eighth film there. They should have known uh, that I was not doing anything mean. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the best. One of the best reviews I ever got of someone who sat through, he spent a whole week watching all of my movies from, from the beginning. He's like, I went every Monday, Monday is Attack the Octopus, but second is Curse the and he watched them in order. He's like, it's like watching a, a film class. It's like taking a film class, because you see the, the first one that's like, oh God, this is awful. And then by the time he's like, this is actually really good. And you see, the, yeah. hey, he has a costumes now, he has lighting now. I mean, yeah. you, it's a, that was one of the best reviews I ever got was, mm -hmm. It's like a master uh, class in what's the what's the frame what's the phrase? It's like a master class in filmmaking. I was like, well, thank you. <laughs> and when you think about it, all the hours that we put in and all like everything that we have to go through, we're obsessed. We're bait. It's you have to. I completely agree with that. You have to be a little kooky. I mean, to each their own. If you're going to be an accountant and you're going to sit at a desk every day and do this, you can't. Be, be the accountant type and be a filmmaker. I guess you could, but I think you have to be a little insane. We all go a little mad. It helps to be very mad. Um, because yeah, I mean, the amount of time, like you said, you spend a whole year on one story that you're constantly working and you're obsessed. It's almost like Captain Ahab and Moby Dick, obsessed after getting the white whale. I'm obsessed to make this movie. And, um, I use normal people. I, it's like, I don't think normal people could could do that. Like, I mean, I talk to people all the time. It's like, you, you're spending your, how long does it take to make a movie? I was like, a year, year and a half. It's like, that's how long you're going to spend that much time on one movie? It's like, yeah, because I love it. And they're like, I could never do that. So, I mean, it's different worlds. Um, accountants, uh, musicians, I mean, all, all sorts of business people, CEOs, completely different worlds. And I guess they have to be mad in their own way because I could never sit at a desk and do calculators. So I guess it really depends on your point of view, but I think, it, yes, I think I'm a little crazy. Everyone needs to be a little crazy to be an artist somehow. Mm -hmm.